he presented in November 2014 when I attended the second international conference of CERA in Caledonia. CERA stands for Societies for Ecological Restoration of Strait Asia. Now, my travel plan was provided by Sherga. That's the reason why I was able to go there and present the paper. And therefore, I am obliged to present the same paper to uh, this seminar series. Now, the data presented in this paper were generated from my research project funded by Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research. That's the first part. And uh, the second part would be taken from the MS thesis of Ms. Frances Mananao. And this portion was already presented in the International Student Conference in Thailand last March 2014. Now, this is a map of Southeast Asia, Australia, and Western Pacific, which shows that these areas are rich in mineral, non-fuel, non-fossil fuel mineral resources. And as you see here in the, our country, is one of those countries which are very rich in mineral resources. Now, uh, my study area is in Benguet, which is part of the Cordillera Administrative Region, and specifically, I con we conducted the research in Mankayan, Benguet, which is at the boundary of Benguet and Ilocos Sur. Now, mining has positive effects on our country's economy. It is one of the sources of foreign exchange of our government. At the same time, mining provides employment in the rural areas. However, there are several negative impacts to the environment of mining activities. Actually, every step in the mining operation would give negative impact to the environment. In this particular study, I will be discussing the negative effect of mine tailings. Now, my daughter here asked me to define what mine tailings are. Mine tailings are waste, rock waste, that are remnants or is a residual rocks after the economic ore or economically important mineral resource has been extracted. Now, extraction is a very wasteful process. In 1970, a rock that contains 0.03% copper is already considered as an economic ore. That means that for every three grams of pure copper extracted, there will be almost one ton, that's 997 kilograms of rock waste. Now, these rock waste are finely ground, and so they are transformed into very fine particles, and then extruded through the use of the river water. And so most often, this rock waste would be removed from the extraction site through the river system. Now, that slurry that you have seen, uh, the pH could be very acidic or alkaline, depending on the type of minerals being mined and the pre-treatment done in the tailing pan. The most difficult and environmentally degrading part of this is that this mine tailings, this mine waste, are rich in heavy metals. They contain, uh, there are some mine tailings that would have a mixture of heavy metals. In this particular study, we have only copper as the toxic heavy metal occurring in large quantities. Normally, 
my feelings would construct dance or impoundments such that the my feelings are deposited as daily funds. Now, this is the present active taking fund of Lepanto Consolidated Mines. This is uh, about 20 hectares. And notice that they construct the tailing funds in valleys, river valleys, and use these rolling hills as matrices so that they construct only the pond on one end. Uh, all of these are slurry that have been deposited through the years, and this would there will be river water that would be extruded somewhere. Now, accidents often occur that would breach or would cause the dams to collapse. And here in the Philippines, we have three widely uh, uh, widely disseminated accidents and these are widely publicized accidents and these are the Mar Copper accident in Marinduque in 1995, the uh, Rapu Rapu accident in Albay in 2005, and recently the 2013 Felix Mining Company accident. Now all these accidents, in all of these accidents, the problem still remains. No uh, remediation has been done. And there are other accidents in our country that have, not, that have not been reported in media, such as the one that I'm going to discuss in this paper. So Mankayang Benguet is the post municipality of a large mining company. Actually, there are two large mining companies in Mankayang Benguet. And these companies have been in operation since 1936. And their products are gold and copper. In 1986, a failing pan bridge accident happened. And huge amounts of copper contaminated mine waste carried by Matkaya River inundated productive lowland body fields. No remediation was done. I, from our uh, interview of farmers, they were paid only 25 centavos per square meter. Uh, in 1986, the dollar exchange was at think, about 28 dollars, uh, 28 pesos per dollar. Now the dollar is already 44.50 centavos per uh, pesos per dollar, and therefore the value of that 25 centavos is already probably one centavo to this day. So very very minimal and since there is no there has been no remediation done the farmers suffer from very low yield from their body fields now i'm emphasizing this because there are many mining operations taking place in our country as i've shown you in the map we have rich deposits of many different kinds of minerals and these accidents happen often. And no studies, as far as I know, has been done to remediate or to address the problem of heavy metal contamination. Now, so we do not have any benchmark information on the rise yield before and after the accident. And our study said that started only in 2011. We had only some idea of the decrease in yield based on our June to September 2013 graph data, wherein we found out that rice yield depends on the level of copper in the soil and on soil pH. Uh, okay, in all my presentation here in this paper, the copper concentration would be equal to amount of recoverable copper. Okay. So this will be the, the data that we got last June to September cropping. The normal concentration of copper in the soil is 
about 30 ppm. Take note that copper is an essential micronutrients. It is needed by plants as well as animals. However, copper concentration higher than 50 ppm in plants would already be toxic. So in the soil, any <coughs> copper concentration higher than 50 would be toxic already. So in one of the fields that we are monitoring, the copper concentration is around 360 ppm. So super toxic. The pH is 7 such that the yield is less than 1 ton per hectare. It's only 0.67 kilograms per square meter. Whereas a field that has more or less normal level would have be either the pH of 5.9, <coughs> would have a yield of about almost 5 tons per hectare or 4. 484 kilograms per hectare. Now, the farmers use the same variety and same season of cropping, and so we concluded that this more or less would be the data with the effect of copper, toxic copper in the soil. And computing this data, we can see that the yield reduction due to copper toxicity is about 86%. And the farmers in Mankayan have been suffering from this very low yield for more than, for about three decades already. So this is, uh, this is the Mankai <coughs> River that carried the uh, toxic mine waste in 1986. And uh, this was taken in 2011. And uh, the uh, fields would have chlorosis and very poor vegetative growth. Usually the vegetative growth is prolonged by about one month before they can yield they can they keep yield, which are very low. Okay, so this is my study site. The dam that collapsed in 1986 is located somewhere here. The present active tailing pan, which I showed you in the slide a few minutes ago, would be this. And our first field site is very close to the active tailing pond. And our two other field sites would be somewhere here, very close to the Mankayan or what the farmers called as the Panto River. So <coughs> when this collapse, most of the paddy fields along this Mankayan River would be inundated, inundated and receiving large quantities of Copper contaminated mine waste. So, uh, before we apply for funding in Bureau of Agricultural Research, there have already some publications in relation to rehabilitation of mine tailings. Uh, but our test plan then was the PROPA forecast, and we conducted only PAC experiment. But take note, I used compost from market waste and the, kind, the concentration would be 16% weight by weight which we were able to show <coughs> significantly improved copper, uh, cation exchange capacity, water holding capacity and soil pH of marginal grassland soil and my student, uh, Ms. Fontanilla, got contaminated soil from mark copper in Mugpong Marinduque, which has available soil copper of 212 ppm. But we were able to reduce this 212 ppm to a normal level of below 30 ppm. So what I'm saying is that we are armed with some knowledge on how to do phytoremediation of agricultural fields. So in this particular series of uh, the studies that we have done, we did this in the field rather than the packs, and we also used rice as our test crop. So our main, we have two objectives to test whether rice is from compost can reduce soil copper toxicity, and also to test whether compost amendment will reduce the brown spot disease incidence. 
I show you a picture where the field is heavily infested by brown spot disease. Now, the brown spot disease is caused by bipolaris or IC, and this is the causal pathogen that caused the Bangladesh famine in 1956. It's a very, very serious disease of rice. And this is in use in, in Mankayan by copper toxicity. <coughs> so we conducted two field studies. The first study would use 8% and 16% compost concentration. And the second field study would verify, take note, this 8 and 16 percent weight by weight was based on the standard 2 million kilogram soil per hectare. That's the flower layer of soil. So that 16 percent would be 32 kilograms compost per square meter. And 8 percent would be 16 kilograms per square meter. That is so much. That's 32 tons per hectare. 16 tons per hectare with 8 percent. So the first field study was conducted in January to April, that's crisis of cropping in 2012. And we have three treatments, control, compost added at 16 kilograms per square meter, and then 32 kilograms. We applied mineral fertilizer depending on, based on the soil fertility status of the agricultural field, in addition to the compost that was applied. Now, the compost was prepared in situ, uh, rice straw, kapta mineral, animal manure were mixed, then uh, rice cold variety was planted. Now, take note that the compost was applied only at 3 by 3 sub -lot in the middle of replicate plants, and then the data were taken in this 2 by 2 meter sub -lot. So, this is one replicate plant. We have four such spuddy fields. But we got our data only from this 2 by 2. Uh, the compost was applied at 3 by 3 padita, uh, sapla. Then the, uh, rice straw, the rice was harvested by cutting close to the roots. Okay, the second study was conducted January to April 2013. And the rate of application and the treatments would be 0, 1 to 4 kilograms per square meter. And another variety was planted. Of course, you have soil samples analyzed for copper content and soil fertility status, start and after high service. Then the seasonality was conduct monitoring was conducted at two weeks interval at the harvest. And the measure of the seasonality was uh, done progressively under AUDPC, which is a methodology adapted from IRI. Then, of course, we have uh, our data and, uh, subjected to statistical analysis. Okay, the data from the first field study. Notice uh, here at the patrol treatment, the uh, Rain yield was very low, only about two tons per hectare. But those treated with compost would be significantly different from the control, but the two treatments are more or less equal. Notice also that the shoot dry weight would be almost equal to the grain dry weight. Now, this is the stack of the field, which would be heavily infested with rice brown spot disease. Now take note that compost application did not affect the disease incidence in our first field experiment. Why? Because the seeds that were used were taken from the same field and the pathogen is seed borne so that even before planting the seeds, the seedlings, when they germinate, would already have the disease. So no effect. A compost application would have no effect. And that's the reason why we view it as a disease problem for our MS students. 
But take a look at what happened to the copper. This would be copper in the soil. Notice that copper would be very high, about 280 ppm. But with compost application, one time compost application, decrease copper level to below 30. And copper level of treatment one is not significantly different from treatment two. Just the same as in yield. Now look at the amount of copper present in the roots. So here, very high in the control, significantly lower in treatment one, and much more significantly lower in treatment two. So it means compost application would already decrease the amount of available copper that is absorbed by the roots. Now the, the straw would have very negligible amount of copper, only three to five ppm, and they are no longer significantly different. Now take note that even if the control has high copper content in the roots, the straws did not have high copper content. That's very significant because the grain did not have high copper content. So it means that the grains that are utilized by the people in Nankaya are safe because the normal level would be about 20 ppm. So untuwa yung mga farmers ng mga tao sa Nankaya when we, dis we discuss these results. Okay. So another very important result from our field experiment would be the significant effect on soil pH. Notice that this, uh, with increasing amount of compost applied, the pH increased significantly. So 5.66, 5.95, and 6.12. That has a very significant impact because pH controls the availability and mobility of copper in the soil, especially acidic pH. Okay, so the results of our first field study would show that compost improves soil pH, making plant nutrients more available while reducing available copper, Soil copper is soil pH is negatively correlated with soil copper concentration. Acidic pH means, means more soluble pH. Now, this first field experiment has already been published last September 2014 in Philippine Science Letters. Now, the second field experiment, part of the thesis of Ms. Frances Malanao. Remember, we have two field experiments. And as you will see here, the rate of compost application is negatively correlated with available copper. As you increase the amount of, uh, amount of compost applied, you have decreasing available copper. And that is true for, the, for both biofilms. Also, in terms of grain yield, there will be significant improvement in yield from control to increasing compost application. In the first field, the amount of copper present would already be quite high, close to 200 ppm. In the second field, it's about 150 ppm. So notice that this would be higher than this first one, even if it's no compost application. And then here, in the second field, even one kilogram compost application per square meter would already significantly increase yield. But notice that there are no significant changes in the yield when increasing compost application. Now, with reference to disease incidence, notice that you have, again, significant negative correlation with disease severity with increasing amount of compost applied. 
So it means that with higher compost applied, there will be decreasing disease incidence. I'd like to point out here that the rice seeds that were used when imported from Pangasinan where there is no incidence of brown spot disease. So these are the data from the two fields. So disease suppression may be due to fish of chemical, biological, and microbiological activity of compost. Take note that compost harbors a variety of microorganisms that can serve as biological control for pathogens. At the same time, compost can remove or reduce the toxicity of copper. And also, with copper reduced, uh, we found out that from literature that disease due to brown spot is because of less amount of silicon that is absorbed by the rice plants making the rice leaves very succulent and uh, the pathogen can freely enter the leaf. So with compost applied, reduced copper toxicity, greater silicon absorbed, greater resistance to the pathogen. So a combination of factors would be responsible for the disease suppression. So our summary of results, the first field experiment, one-time application already lowered soil copper to normal level. However, applying 32 kilograms per square meter is unattainable, impractical. So that the second field experiment showed that even one kilogram per square meter compost application is already effective. And this would have very great practical implication to convincing farmers to apply compost as a major constituent of their fertilization scheme. Take note that we do not discourage the non-application of mineral fertilizer. So it will be compost plus mineral fertilizer. Because compost here would serve not only as a fertilizer, but as a big remediation measure to reduce copper toxicity. And so we concluded that compost amendment is a promising method to rehabilitate compost contaminated areas. Compost would improve overall health as we have shown with the reduction in disease severity. And also, this would mean that the, there is restoration of agricultural land productivity. There is also, with reduction in copper toxicity, indigenous plant species would be growing during the follow period. Now, from literature, because we have not verified this in our research, humic acids in organic matter would form stable complexes that reduce availability and mobility of heavy metals, not only copper, but most heavy metals would be rendered unavailable for plant absorption with application of compost. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Cuevas. Uh, the floor is now open for your comments, insights, questions. Uh, please use the microphone along the aisles and kindly of introduce yourself and the organization that you represent. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I mentioned that 
we encourage the farmers to do in situ composting. Uh, so all the rice straws that have been harvested from the same paddy field would be composted in the field with addition of uh, manure, uh, uh, leguminous plants or green uh, manure, you know, plants that are rich in nitrogen, like Clericita septum or Takawati, Ipipipil, uh, sunflowers, and then of course, we encourage application of my favorite trichoderma <laughs> activator. <laughs> Actually, I am putting in all the technologies that I have generated. I encourage also the use of uh, trichoderma microbial inoculant, the biosport here. But uh, what is significant here and what I keep on emphasizing is the more organic matter coming from plants, because the plants would, the plant compost would have more humic acid than uh, other types of compost. So that's our advice. By the way, I, our product is still ongoing, and so we have uh, 12 farmer operators. And our results here have been verified. We are already on our fourth season cropping. And every after season, uh, after every after harvest, I, we monitor the copper content, the soil pH, and the organic matter content of the soil. Ma'am, the use of trichoderma has already been established to really help the plant reabsorb the nutrients, right? So, do, uh, do you think there would be no significant effect on the fertilization if the trichoderma wasn't there? Uh, you yeah. know, both the control and the treated would have trichoderma. So, the effect is already eliminated. Yes, yes ma'am.
how did you apply to our course? Is it uh, during the time when you did you apply it uh, together with the inorganic fertilizer, or you applied it ahead of the inorganic uh, fertilization? Uh, I followed the rapid composting technology that we have developed. It was applied as basal fertilizer. By the way, uh, we have modified it with the BSWM, wherein the the body field, the uh, rice straws are scattered in the body field, and then uh, trichoderma would be broadcasted over it together with the other constituents, the plant materials, and the manure would be scattered on top of the field. So they are this, uh, they are already decomposed in the body field, and then plow under during the last handling. So you have first field preparation, then composting for three weeks, and then uh, the last handling, the compost would be applied in the field. So that there will be less uh, labor, and the compost would serve as basal fertilizer, then mineral fertilizer will be again applied. The gentleman at the back. No, uh, I'm an analyst and student. I mean, what if the compost is infected with the pathogen? Is it uh, does it have any effect in the? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, that's the reason why I encourage our farmers to use trichoderma activator because we have shown that trichoderma is a very good control agent of pathogens. So we apply the trichoderma, and then also with decomposition, very good decomposition of the substrates, the pathogens are also, uh, the population of the pathogens also decrease. With uh, good decomposition of the substrates, uh, you have reduced population. Actually, that's always a question given to us what happens to the pathogens because uh, they discourage the use of crop residues. They do not want to encourage uh, recycling of the agricultural waste because of the fear of inoculating more pathogens into the field. But with good decomposition and with trichoderma applied, you have. Uh, we do not have any incidents. And as I have shown in our data, the bipolaris oryzae disease incidence is very much less. Any more questions? Yes. Ben Garnice. Ben Garnice, page Mr. I would like to know if in the soil, what kind of copper did you get? You get the total copper or the available copper or the acceptable copper? Okay, very good question. Our method of analysis would uh, give recoverable copper. Exchangeable copper would be would mean uh, extraction using dilute acid. But plants, especially the roots, are able to extract more nutrients, not only copper, but only but nutrients from the soil because the roots actually secrete some organic acids which make the nutrients, whether it's phosphorus, whether it's copper, more available. So we go for recoverable copper not just the exchangeable copper. Uh, aside from the, from the note that you've given from the literature that may be a uh, possible mechanism is could be due to humic substances, uh, possible, uh, possible reason why um, there were copper in the soil and some in the shoot and some in the, some in the grain. grain. Uh, is there any, or do you have any other explanation why, or mechanism why it happened? Okay. 
uh, based on literature, I can cite two uh, Pendeas. Uh, she mentioned that copper would be absorbed on the cellulose cell wall. Remember, copper is a fat ion. And the cellulose cell wall is negatively charged, partially negative. So you'll have more of the copper ions immobilized by absorption on the cellulose cell wall. And that is also a mechanism by plants to reduce toxicity. It's a, a mechanism by plants for reducing toxicity of the element in the upper portion. So I do not know if th that is true for other metals, heavy metals. But uh, Pendias would uh, mention this to be specific for copper. And so in almost all of our uh, studies done, most of the copper would be in the roots, very minimal. And the mechanism is known as phytostabilization. With reference to UNIC, I have my student there, Jeremiah, who would be studying that <laughs> effect of UNIC acid. As he is still doing the experiment, so he cannot give any other results yet. Do you have any plans to to uh, to study what could be the possible relationship or the possible soil plan transfer of metals? I mean, I think you could do that. I think you could do that. Unfortunately, <laughs> even if I want to, I'm already retired. <laughs> I can probably give it to other. Uh, I'm I'm more interested in uh, in. Uh, uh, convincing more farmers to do composting and rather than going to the basic aspects because uh, I'd rather devote uh, a few more years of my active life to help with the farmers. Thank you. Hi, ma'am. I'm Jerka Igalang, a BS Agricultural Economics student. Um, I just want to ask the issue of the cost and sourcing of this rice to compost. Because usually, um, ang farmers ay ang unang talang lagi is magkano ba yun siya kasal pa kinabuhay? Uh, may ma maraming available na compost for sale. And with uh, the enactment of Organic Agriculture Act of 2010, that already encouraged more entrepreneurs to produce organic fertilizer. So, hindi ko alam. I think per 20, 50 kilogram sack, the selling price is around 200 pesos. For farmers who do not want to do composting. But in our study, we encourage the farmers to recycle their agricultural waste. Iho, yung area namin ay bulubunduki. <laughs> At magdala ka ng 50 kilogram uh, compost. And the rate of application is 1 kilogram per square meter. Ay napakahila. So, but they are already complaining because of the labor. But nakikita uh, naman nila na nag-improve ang yield. So I think that is an incentive by itself. Before. Yes. Okay. Last question. How about the trichoderma inacula? Is it this, uh, is it uh, still available sa IBS or? It is or commercially <laughs> available. It oh, is okay. being produced by Biospark Corporation. The uh, manufacturer, the plant is at Thank you.